moving on to dsdm contracts this is something that's very prevalent in the europe and uk uh, anything and everything that needs to be done needs to fit for business purpose needs to be fit for a business purpose that's the dsdm dsdm is uh, dynamic systems development method uh, one of the agile flavors this has been coined by them as that anything any work primarily cannot just meet the specifications but need to be fit for business purpose and these are the different contracts that we typically spoke about so what all did we cover we covered uh, something to do with uh, uh, change for free money for nothing 60 40 20 then you also spoke about graduated uh, thing where you pay higher for finishing it early and things like that then we talked about dsdm there are other ways where you have to kind of manage your contracts very well which is uh, specifically to do with large bid projects it just it goes for one one and a half years you will need to try to find out what is the best way you know sitting here trying to lay, lay out a contract for one and a half years what's the best way to do it so many companies large it services firms what they do is they spend the first few weeks trying to kind of you know come out with the contract which means trying to come out with the the real contractual negotiations they would be using any of these they might use even 60 40 20 for that for all you know they will also be using sometimes they might be using certain differential rate based contracts where senior guys might be put on the project to really get some prototyping done uh, so that the customer is either the customer is not willing to commit for one and a half years if the feasibility itself is not there so these are various contractual things that we can work rather than trying to do a big bang approach of a traditional way of going trying to break that entire work breakdown structure putting a dollar figure to every single line item out there and things like that so progressive elaboration of the scope anyway is the big thing about agile and that's exactly where we need to kind of look at in the um, in large contracting engagements as far as i understand uh, there are lot of uh, value driven penalties which means you haven't delivered value uh, you haven't delivered value by so and so period of time it doesn't make my timeline so those also need to be factored in because it will be otherwise very overly biased either to the buyer or the seller so that's the typical thing on the agile contracting 